Hi everyone, in this lesson, you're gonna learn how to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. And on this first page, I just have some review. It's always good to go back and you know just kind of review the concepts and all the other ways that you've learned how to solve a quadratic equation. And at the top of the page here, I just am noting the different forms. Remember, when it's in standard form, one of the things that we love is that we know that the y-intercept is gonna be the value of zero comma c. If we're in vertex form, we know that the vertex is going to be h comma k. And if it's in factored form, we're going to know the x-intercepts of the graph. In this case, it would be r and s would be the x-intercepts. So those are the different forms of a quadratic equation. And then some of the methods we've looked at, of course, we've done a lot of factoring to solve a quadratic equation. I have an example of factoring here. We've learned how to, um, in the last lesson, we learned how to use the graphing calculator to find the zeros. So we could find the x-intercepts on the graphing calculator. And these were, um, this is the steps that we would use on the calculator to do that. You could also use the quadratic formula. I have it listed here. Or you could use the finding the square roots method if we have a binomial that is another, you know, really nice, easy way to solve a quadratic. So today we're going to be looking at solving quadratics by completing the square. And, you know, we just like to have a lot of tools in our toolbox when we're solving so that we're always going to be able to choose the quickest way possible to make our lives easier. So it may not seem like right now I'm making your life easier, but this completing the square method, believe it or not, does come in handy sometimes. So we're going to learn how to do that. And then we'll also look at how we can use completing the square to put our quadratic in vertex form and make it very easy to find the vertex. So by completing the square, you can solve equations that cannot be solved by factoring or by graphing. And the way we're going to complete the square is we're going to do b divided by 2 squared. And then we'll take the square roots of both sides. And I have a note to be sure to balance the equation when you add something or you subtract something from one side, then you have to balance it by doing the opposite. So I have an example here. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave a placeholder next to the um, linear term. This is the linear term. We're going to leave a placeholder there and a placeholder at the end. So whatever number is our complete the square number is going to go here. And right here is where we're going to balance it. So our complete the square number is b divided by 2 squared, and in this case, b is negative 8. So negative 8 divided by 2 squared, that gives me 16. So I'm going to add 16 to this side of the equation, and if I add 16, I have to subtract 16. Now this is the most important part. This x squared minus 8x plus 16 can be factored to x minus 4 times x minus 4. And then that can be rewritten as x minus 4 squared. So that's like the whole point, all right? Then we have this on the end here. We have this plus 20 minus 16. That simplifies to plus 4. So now we're in vertex form. All right, well, one good thing about that is looking at this, I know my vertex. My h is going to be 4, and my k is going to be 4 on the outside. So that's one good thing about vertex form. I can also use it in vertex form to solve. So if I set this now equal to 0, as I've shown you here, I move that 4 over to the other side, take the square to both sides, and solve for x, I get my solutions. Okay, your head's probably spinning. Don't worry, we're going to do a lot of these together. I just wanted to have that on the page as a reference. All right, so let's complete the square with number one. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna rewrite it with placeholder, a placeholder next to the linear term. You'll put that minus four and a placeholder. Now we're gonna find the complete the square number, All right? Now, I usually will kind of do this off to the side the complete the square number is b over 2 squared. In this case, b is 4. So 4 over 2 squared, right? That's just 2 squared. So my complete the square number is 4. This 4 is going to go right here. 
I can't just add a four to the left side. I have to balance it by putting a minus four, all right? Now, this part right here can be rewritten. If I factor this, I'm gonna get x plus two times x plus two. So this part here is x plus two times x plus two. And then the minus four minus four becomes minus eight. All right, I can rewrite x plus two times x plus two as just x plus two squared. And now I get to do the fun part, I get to solve it. So I'm gonna solve it by taking the square roots of both sides, but that means I have to move the eight over first. So I'm gonna get x plus two squared equals eight, add eight to both sides. Now I'll take the square root of both sides. On the left side, I'll just have x plus two, we like that. And on the right side, I'm gonna have plus or minus root eight. To solve for x, I have to subtract two from both sides. So my final answer is minus two plus or minus root eight. If you wanna simplify the radical, you can, but you don't have to. It might be bothering some people that I left it like that. Uh, if we simplify the radical, we get minus two plus or minus two root two. All right, so I would take either answer. This guy is okay, or this guy. All right, let me do another one. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our placeholders. We have a placeholder after the linear term and a placeholder after the constant. Now we're gonna find our complete the square number. So our complete the square number is gonna be b over two squared, and this is b. So negative two over two squared, that's negative one squared, which is one. So our complete the square number is plus one, All right? If I put a plus one on the left side of the equation, I'm gonna to have to put a minus one to balance it. Now I haven't changed the equation. I'm gonna factor this and I'll combine these two numbers. Now when I factor x squared minus two x plus one, I'm gonna get x minus one times x minus one. And then minus one minus one here becomes minus two. I'm gonna rewrite x minus one times x minus one is just x minus one squared. And now I'm gonna solve this by taking the square roots of both sides. That means I have to move the two over I have to add two to both sides. So I get x minus one squared equals two. Now I'll take the square root of both sides. So then x equals one, add one to both sides, one plus or minus root two. Okay, now I'm gonna change it up just a little. Instead of working all on one side, if you notice, I have some of the equation written on the right side. That's okay, we can, still, we can still do completing the square. Let's talk about how it changes it a little bit. I've got x squared minus eight x and a placeholder, and I've got minus 36 and a placeholder. All right, so let's find our complete the square number. My complete the square number is 16. Now. I'm adding 16 to the left side of the equation. And if I wanna balance this equation, since I'm working on the left and the right side, I will add 16 over here, All right? So that would be balancing, as opposed to working on one side of the equation. If I worked on one side, I would do a plus and a minus. If I'm working on two sides of the equation, I would just add 16 to both sides. If I add 16 to both sides, I am not changing the equation. Right? Just like if I'm working on one side and I do the, you know, add, subtract, I'm not changing it there either. All right, now on the left side of the equation, I'm going to factor. And on the right side of the equation, negative 36 plus 16 is negative 20. I'll rewrite x minus 4 times x minus 4 as x minus 4 squared. 
And now I'll take the square roots of both sides and solve for x. So on the left, I get x minus 4. And on the right, I get plus or minus. Now, that negative under the radical, we just want to do a little sidebar note here that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So whenever I have a negative under a radical, remember, I have to include i in my answer. I cannot have a negative under the radical. I have to represent it with the letter i. Now we solve for x, and I get 4 plus or minus i root 20. If you are one of those people that likes to uh, simplify the radical, that root 20, um, root 20, let's just make a little note off to the side, is the same as root 4 times 5. That's the same as root 4 times root 5, which is 2 root 5. So this could also be written as 4 plus or minus 2i root 5. I would accept it either way. All right, let's take a look at number 4. All right, we have, we're working on two sides of the equation this time. So I'm going to leave a placeholder here on the left side, and I'm going to leave a placeholder on the right side. I'm going to find my complete the square number. I'm going to add 9 to both sides to balance my equation. x squared plus 6x plus 9 factors to x plus 3, x plus 3. And negative 34 plus 9 is negative 25. I can rewrite x plus 3 times x plus 3 as x plus 3 squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. On the left side, I get x plus 3. On the right side, I get plus or minus 5i. Square root of 25 is 5. The square root of negative 1 is i. Solve for x. I'm going to get negative 3 plus or minus 5i. All right, moving on. Now, if I can convert a quadratic to vertex form, I can really easily find the vertex. So that's really the goal here. And you know, in the past, we've learned to find the vertex by using this x equals negative b over 2a. And then we take that x coordinate of the vertex and we substitute it in and we find the y coordinate. And to me, that's a little tedious. I'm gonna put it in vertex form using complete the square and then I can just look at it and know the vertex. Right, we want to put it in vertex form. So we have our equation, and we're gonna we're working on one side of the equation this time. So let me let me write that out with my placeholders. Placeholder next to the linear term, and a placeholder next to the constant. Now I'm gonna find my complete the square number. Okay, my complete the square number is 25, and since I'm working on one side of the equation, if I add 25, I need to subtract 25. Now, this part of the equation, x squared minus 10x plus 25 factors to x minus 5 times x minus 5. And minus 2 minus 25 gives me minus 27. So if I write x minus 5 times x minus 5 as x minus 5 squared minus 27, now it's in vertex form. Wonderful. I can just look at it, and I know the vertex. This is the h part of the vertex. This is the k part of the vertex. Let me label that. So my solution is going to be 5, negative 27. That's my vertex. I would suggest trying number six on your own, and when you're ready, come back and restart the video. I'm gonna leave a placeholder next to my linear term and next to my constant. I'm going to find my complete the square number. If I add 25 on one side of the equation, then I have to subtract 25 since I'm working on one side of the equation. 
this part is going to factor to x plus 5 times x plus 5 plus 3 minus 25 gives me minus 22. x plus 5 times x plus 5 can be written as x plus 5 squared. All right now we're in vertex form. This is h, this is k. So my vertex is going to be negative 5, negative 22. Remember, vertex form is going to be x minus h squared plus k. That's vertex form. So the h value is always going to be the opposite of what is inside those parentheses. So h would be the opposite, which would be negative 5. Just like here, it's negative 5. It's going to be positive 5. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed learning this new method for solving quadratics. Have a great day.